Hello! Welcome to episode 5 of the Airy Knits podcast. My name is Ariel and this is a video podcast where I will be talking about the things that I am knitting on or just other crafting things that I'm working on, um, but probably mostly knitting um, things that I've cast on, finished, and maybe some things that I've bought. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for today's episode because I have um, made a lot of progress on some of my projects and I started a new cast on this morning um, and I also bought some stuff yesterday and that was a whole experience in itself and so I'm really excited to um, get to talk about that. Um, but we'll get to that um, towards the end of the video. Um, let's get all of the normal stuff out of the way first. Um, I don't want to say out of the way because I do enjoy talking about, um, I mean, just anything knitting. Um, but yeah, so super excited for today's episode. I hope you're all having a great day, whichever day you're watching this on. Today it is Saturday, September 3rd, and it's, um, I can't believe that it's already September. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm still trying to process that it's near the end of the year um, and yeah I am actually really looking forward to doing some kind of like um, all the things that I've knitted in 2022 because I think that would be super interesting and even though I myself like did knit these things I think it'd be really cool to see in like one thing and and kind of like have all the knitted things like piled up to see like what I've knitted in a year or what I, how much I can knit in a year because I don't think I've ever like thought about that um, but anyway that's getting ahead of ourselves um, yeah so I hope you're having a great day thank you so much for watching um, and hope you stick around for the rest of this video so I want to start off to um, today talking about what I am wearing because I'm super excited about it I finished it last week and I showed it on um, the podcast but I didn't weave in all the ends um, so now the ends are all weaved in it is blocked and yeah so I'm wearing it and it is the 05 tie side tank by Eleanor from Eleanor Alice Knits and I think all of the great details are here on the side that you can see it has this cute little tie little bow on the side the side slits kind of overlap here along with the underarms and I am wearing a black tank top under this if you are wondering but this is how it looks on both sides it's an overall, overall around um, single basket weave stitch has a nice neckline really like the edging um, on this I like the drape on this as well and just overall like super happy with the end product of this. Um, I The yarn that I used was Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the colorway Plum Rose and I did the size 3. Um, I My measurements were between a size 2 and size 3 so I decided to um, go up a size I think. I, I really like how it fits um, but I think maybe um, the next time I make this I might try a size 2 just to, so that I can have one that's a bit more like um, like I'll have this one that has a bit more room and then see what it's like to have one that's a bit more fitted so I think this one would be a great layering piece so maybe I could even wear it like a vest so that I could wear like long sleeves under it when it gets colder um, but it's perfect for right now um, it's still pretty warm it's getting cooler now at least for some of the days um, but it is still like I don't want to wear long sleeve things so this is perfect for that weather um, I did test this out and I wore it out all day yesterday and I went out um, which I'll talk about later because I did take a special trip to go to a yarn store yesterday um, but yeah so I wore this and it worked out really well and held up well and very comfortable um, even in the heat so yeah super happy and excited about this um, this is a test knit and the test knit is still um, going on. I just finished before the deadline so pattern is not out yet but definitely keep your eye out for it because I think it is a really like really um, comfortable, um, really 
unique piece. Like, I don't think I've seen a top that does anything like this. Um, yeah, and I really like it. Super wearable. So, yeah, super excited about this. Um, and keep your eye out for the pattern, and I'll let you guys know here, too. Um, so, yeah, that is what I am wearing, and the only finished object I have. I did not finish um, anything since last week, although I am close, close to finishing some items, so they'll probably be done for next episode. Um, so we can start just moving on to talk about my whips or my works in progress. Um, I made a lot of progress on one thing, well, on two things. Um, so the first one I want to show is my peony sweater by Sylvia um, from Silva Knits on Instagram. And again, all of the descriptions for what I talk about will be down in the description box below. Um, so this is what I have. I think last time I showed it, I only had part of the back done, but I've made the back and the front connected for under the arms and I'm starting to work the body. You can see this V neck in the front um, and it's going to have um, some finishing parts in the neckline and a collar, which I'm really excited about. Um, but yeah, so this is what I have done so far. As you can see for the body, I've decided to do the cables, um, the cable version that has cables going all around the body. Um, I was considering like if this was too colorful because I used um, a variegated yarn that um, maybe I would just go with the plain version with no cables, but I think it would look um, really cute with the cables. Um, so yeah, so that's what I started. I gotta say, the um, working the cables, I like the look of cables and I don't mind working them, but when they're like the one row where you have to do all of them around, it's kind of tedious. Um, but I know that I will like the end result, so super excited about this. Um, yes, yeah, so the yarn, again, as a reminder, or if you just didn't watch the previous videos, which is totally fine, um, I am using Sorella yarn. Um, one is in, and I'll show it to you in um, this balled up form here. One is the, um, so I'm looking at my notes if you see me looking on the side here, um, classic sock, her classic sock base in the colorway You Are Good for the Soul and it's this pink color and then I am doubling it with some Surrey Lace in the colorway The Lobby. So I'm pairing those two together so the variegated yarn is the Surrey which I was wondering how it would look because I don't think I've done a pairing of variegated Surrey with a um, tonal um, color. So yeah, I think it's turning out pretty cool. You can see, I was wondering if you would be able to see if there was any color pooling in this. And you can kind of see it on the sides here. Um, maybe, and, and on the back. Um, you can see that, actually a bit more, I think, in the camera than in person. You can see there's like some pink, like a blob here, some more blue, and then pink over here. But I think because it is Surrey, it makes it less noticeable and just kind of makes it seem more like watercolory, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm fine with it. So yeah, super excited to get this to, um, worked up. Um, and yeah, I'm actually the most excited part about this top for me that I can't wait to get to is going to be working the neckline because there's going to be a folded over collar um, so yeah oh um, my battery's running out so let me just change that real quick before I like keep talking on okay we are back with a fresh battery so we should be good for the rest of this episode and I finally um, got um, a larger um, SD card so hopefully I won't run out of memory um, this time so yeah, I need to get a routine down, but I think we're good for now, for the rest of this video. Um, but yeah, so, yes, that was, I was just finishing talking about this peony sweater. And just being really excited about working on the neckline, because I've never done a collar. Like one that is like on dress shirts, <laughs> if that makes sense. 
Um, I've never done one of those, so yeah, that was the design element of this that I was really excited about. Um, oh, and some other notes for this. I am doing size A, which I think is the smallest size, and I am using the recommended size 8 needles for this. Um, so yeah, this is the peony sweater. Okay, and then the next one I want to talk about is one that I am, I am pretty much finished with. I just need to sew on but well, I need to block it and then sew on buttons, which I am, I am shocked that I finished this because I think I started it last weekend and I showed a little bit of it during last week's episode. But I was so obsessed with making this cardigan. Um, so let me um, say what it is before I continue talking about how much I love it. It is the Go Gently Cardigan by Amy Schur. Her Instagram handle is Amy Schur Makes. And look at this. Don't know how to hold it up. Maybe I can just try it on so you can at least kind of see. Like it's not blocked and, you know, but it's... All the knitting and the sewing and you know the seaming is done so oh it's so cute oh my gosh okay so it does not match my outfit currently but oh my goodness that is so cute and it's so comfortable and that ruffle Ew. ah okay sorry I'm just I had such a great time making this. I was really obsessed with making this. It was so enjoyable. Um, so yeah, so this is a cardigan. Um, the yarn I used was from Woolberry Fiber Co. I used two yarns held double. One was in her base berry merino in the colorway Saltwater Taffy, which is, was, is the variegated color. It was like a nice cream um, base with some blues and pinks and um, I held it with her berry Surrey base in the colorway coral which was a super nice um, like peachy but more on the pink side color and so that was a Surrey so this makes it a bit more um, peachy pink um, yeah so Things that I really like and found super enjoyable about, about making this cardigan was one, in the beginning it was, all the increases were kind of done doing a circular yoke, so as it increased, so you start at the neckline by the way, and um, it'll increase evenly across, and then after that there were some raglan increases, I don't know if you can see that, but right here starting about like here for the arms which I thought was very interesting construction wise um, and then once you work the body um, the one part that I didn't realize was that the sleeves were not worked in the round and when I saw the instructions that they were worked flat I kind of was like oh I wonder if I'm just gonna change that to work in the round because I really don't want to seem all up the side of the arm but I decided I wanted to follow the instructions as it said and I think my gauge is pretty even between working in the round and working flat um, that was kind of the main reasoning in the instructions for working the sleeves flat because the rest of the body was worked flat as well so if your gauge differs a lot and I didn't even think about this but yeah if your gauge differs a lot between working in the round and flat um, you would have a huge difference in gauge between sleeves and the body but even though I felt mine was pretty um, even I decided to work it flat just for that experience and so I did have to do some seaming a mat I think it was a mattress stitch um, of the sleeve but I think I've gotten pretty good and I've been changing my mindset on how I f feel about having to like sew weave in ends and to sew um, things on my knitted garments. Um, I try to think of it more as like a relaxing, repetitive work. I mean, that's kind of what knitting is too, right? So, I don't know. But I think I've done a pretty good job um, seaming that up together. I think it was pretty even on both sides. Um, so yeah, and then after that, 
the neckline and the um, button band were worked separately. I actually, after I worked the one side of the button band, I realized that I used the wrong needle size to use it. I used the same needle size as the body instead of using two sizes down. Um, but I think it turned out okay. So yeah, I was, I was like, I don't think I'm going to rip back. So I just left it as is, but I think it looks fine. And I really actually liked, so the button holes are made while you're knitting the button band and they're vertical. And I actually really liked how this was done. I think there were some other cardigans that I've made that you would knit the, um, the buttonholes in different ways. And I just didn't like kind of how some of those were done or they were just very tedious. But I really liked how the instructions were for this one. So if you are interested, um, I mean, this cardigan pattern is great. So, you know, if you like it, I highly recommend. Um, but also just to see how this buttonhole like the, the instructions for how to make the buttonhole was. I like really, really enjoyed it. Like, um, it didn't have you have to like, um, I think I had some where you would have to bind off stitches to make the hole and then you would have to cut your yarn and start again and then cast on another row and you have all these ends to weave in. But for this one, you make the hole in a way where you don't have to cut your yarn and there's no weird like, um, like holes at the edges like I think it just all kind of like looks really neat so I really liked how the instructions were for this um, so yeah super excited and then yeah so all that I is left is for me oh sorry how can I forget to talk about the ruffle um, the thing that really caught my eye on this was that the ruffle on this is actually not like straight stockinette it's like this lace pattern I think is so cute like it just adds a little something to that ruffle I mean the ruffle already like makes it really cute but that lace ruffle I don't think I've seen I don't think I've seen it so it's just it's so cute I've been in like a ruffle phase I feel like and so this was like gotta make this for sure so oh, I just love the color I love everything about this card again and that's why I finished it so quickly this, it was I finished it like in a week that is crazy um so yeah and it's my first card again that I made with Surrey and just holding it like this it's so soft I can just when the weather gets colder I can just put it on or if not I can just like hug it or just lay it across you know just go like this maybe where does <laughs> where does a scarf just put it on my legs to keep me warm. I don't know. It's just so soft and comfy. So can't wait for cooler weather to wear this. Um, and yeah, so after I block it, I need to sew on the buttons and then it is done. And I bought some buttons yesterday. So we will talk about that during the acquisitions part because I'm just like so excited to talk about that. And it'll, it's coming soon, but I'll talk about it then. And then I'll, I'll mention, of course, I'll show it how it looks on this cardigan because I checked and it looks so cute so but yeah so we'll get to the buttons later but yeah this is the go gently cardigan with the cute ruffles super happy with this okay so those were I mean I really this past week it was funny the week before I think I like I made some progress on like six different projects and then this week it was pretty much just the peony sweater and the go gently cardigan it was pretty much mostly the cardigan because I really just wanted to finish it um, because I loved it that much so yeah and then I I told I thought to myself some of my test knits are wrapping up and I was like Hmm, I wonder if I'll have some time where I don't have to work on any test knits and then I decided to apply to one and I super luckily got into this test knit. Um, she is a new designer to me so that's exciting for me always. Love supporting um, smaller designers and um, you may have seen it on Instagram because it was pretty popular and I, I saw it circulating, circulating around on Instagram 
It is the Winona Polo by Emily, and her Instagram handle is msnits or mmes.nits. I'll have the name down below so you can search um, them up. And yeah, so the Winona Polo is a long sleeve shirt that has, I realized that a lot of the knits that I have planned have those collars, like in those like, I guess like polo shirts, like those collars. Um, yeah, I, I kind of just realized that. So maybe I'm going through, similarly to my ruffle phase, I'm going through like a collar shirt phase. Um, but yeah, so it has that and it has a little like button thing right in the middle. So I'm excited for that. And her, um, like when she, her sample knit of it had like the stripe design where um, she will have instructions for how to make that stripe design as well. And of course you can like use whatever stripe design or solid color, whichever you want um, for the actual, you know, when you make it. But I was, I am planning on doing her stripe design because I really liked it. I made a gauge swatch this morning and I already started. Um, the back, but I want to show you my gauge swatch. So these are the four colors that I'm planning on using. And I'm hoping, I'm not the greatest, I feel like I've gotten a bit better with choosing colors for patterns, like how to match them so that they look the way that I'm envisioning, but I'm still not great, I feel like, with stripes for multiple colors. Um, so I'm hoping this turns out nice. I think the colors look okay together. So yeah, so these four colors, and I do want to mention them because some of them are new to me. Actually, one of them is. So I will start, and I brought the labels here because I'm going to forget. So this color here, this like um, peachy pink orange, uh, it kind of looks orange, but it's more peachy pink, I think. Um, it is from and this is it in skein form. This is from Big Little Yarn Co., which I've heard about her yarns, but I've never, it was only kind of recently that I've heard about her yarns and she hasn't had any um, like updates because she was on maternity leave. Um, I also found her YouTube podcast as well, which is, I was binge watching because it is so great. Um, and I really like her vibe and um, yeah. So yeah, it's Mel. Her name's Mel from Big Little Yarn Co. And I actually got this colorway when I was in a yarn store in Oregon, um, the Naughty Lamb, which I love the name, it's so cute. Um, they had this and so I was like, I wanted to grab it. Um, this is in the trusty sock base, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It is 463 yards, 400 grams, four ply. And the colorway is Sakura. Um, and yeah, and Mel lives in Japan. And so I really like that a lot of her, like, at least the colorways I saw um, were like Japan inspired. So yeah, so this one's Sakura. Um, really nice. It's coming out a bit more like orange, but it's definitely like a pinky, pinky orange. I guess there's some parts that there's more pink moments um, in it. But I do like that. It's very, it looks very like neutral um, to me. So really excited to see. I mean, it feels great. And um, yeah, so I think the base is great. So yeah, Big Little Yarn Co. Really happy I'm finally getting to use this yarn for a project. And then this darker pink color right here is a good old trusted color. I think I've used this in so much projects because I I bought a lot of it because I had plans for it and then those plans I didn't I decided not to make what I was planning on making with them and so I just spread them out through a whole bunch of projects but it's a great color. I think it's kind of my vibe. I mean it's kind of similar color as this shirt too so it's a color I do like. It is from Sorella and it's in it or the colorway is terracotta and I think this was the spring I think it's her from her spring tonals this year and it's just a very like rosy um, muted pink on the darker side color if any of those words make sense um, <laughs> to you 
yeah this is that color and it's oh in the classic sock base which is 100% superwash merino um, then this green down here I am using I just realized all four of these yarns are from different dyers and different bases which is should be interesting um, but yes this green I have this is it wound up um, and I have the tag here it's from wool berry fiber co um, in her berry cashmere base which is 80% superwash merino and 10% cashmere 10% nylon um, 400 yards for 100 grams in the colorway green gables which um, if you're like I haven't seen it. Um, it's actually from her um, 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 Anne of Green Gables yarn club, which I signed up for earlier this year. And so I've been getting, I signed up for one for each month. You get, you get to choose what you want, but I chose to have one, um, what is it called? One variegated color and one um, tonal. And so I believe this is the tonal. Pretty sure this is the tonal for one of the months. I'm not sure which month it was. But yeah, it's this green. Really excited about it. Um, I think it's a great green. I think when I was looking for colors to go for this um, this um, pattern, I knew that I wanted to use these top two just because I had the yarn amounts that I needed. Um, but I wasn't sure about the last two. So I thought the green would look great. And then a white because white kind of goes with everything. Um, this white is nothing super special, um, but here's the tag. It is from Knit Picks. It is their undyed yarn um, superwash, um, fingering weight Capretta, which is 80% um, superwash um, merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And yeah, I actually got so this is the undyed yarn, so that's why it's just white. Um, I actually bought this when I bought kind of a lot of yarn to experiment dyeing yarn with, but um, I thought a white would be great, so I just decided to just use this undyed. I think it looks great. It's not, it's, it's actually white, like it's not like a yellow, yellowy white. It's actually pretty white, so I think it's, it's pretty good on its own. So yeah. So those are the four colors that I am going to use for the Winona Polo. Super excited. Then I can show you what I have so far. This is just what I've done today. Um, started at the back and it starts with, um, I've decided to use the Sakura color from Big Little Yarn Co. Actually it's this way. Yeah, so you work from the top down and this is the back again. I'm right at the part where I'm going to start switching colors, um, so I'm really excited about that. And I am using the pattern recommends, and this is a test knit, by the way. So you know things, some things are subject to change, possibly, maybe. Um, but the pattern um, asks for or recommended needle size is US three, and I went with the US two because I do tend to knit a bit looser, and the gauge was um, 28 stitches by 40 stitches and so that's kind of small for me although I tested it on some smaller needles because I thought US 3 was going to be way too big and I earlier in the summer I did knit a top with size 2 needles that asked for 28 by 40 stitches for the gauge and my gauge was still too big so I went to US one and a half, but that was too small so I went up to this and this seems to be fine. I feel like I might be, the perfect needles would be between um, US 2 and US 1.5. I don't think they do one um, at that increment, but we're going to go with US 2. That seems to be the closest, seems to be working out pretty well. Um, so yeah, we'll see how much I get done of this. We'll see how much stripes. I feel like um, patterns that have stripes um, are a bit more addicting to work on because you want to get to the next stripe um, and it's also easy to see how much progress you've made on it um, so yeah so far just one color but we'll see 
by next week um, how much more of this I get done. But super excited about this as well and excited to get to the collar of this because I cannot wait. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think this pattern looks really great and I'm curious to see kind of like how um, it gets constructed and how like the sleeves and the, the um, sleeve cuff, I guess I could read the instructions ahead, um, but, but anyway, um, yeah, just got it like yesterday, I think, the pattern, so I'm just kind of diving right in on that. Super excited, so if you want to see what the, the actual like, um, uh, what's the word, um, sample pattern looks like, go check out um, Emily's Instagram, and again, I'll have the descriptions and names all listed down below, because this is really cute, and it's a pattern, I think, should keep an eye out for um, when it comes out, maybe I think in a couple months or something. Yeah, so that's that. And we are done talking about the whips. Now is the exciting part where I get to talk about my acquisitions and things that I have gotten. It's, it kind of seems like, I mean, it's only episode five, although it's also like, wow, already episode five, um, since I'm only doing this about once a week. So far that's been the cadence and I've talked about a lot of acquisitions and I don't really, well, I, I do buy a lot of yarn, I will admit to that, um, but it's not like every week, so, but anyway, this week there are things and it was something special because I, um, oh, I've, I've talked about this I think two episodes ago, sorry, I'm like building this up. Um, the yarn shop La Mercerie, um, who is owned by Jess, um, they, I've learned about them kind of recently, maybe in the past few months, um, on Instagram, and so I assumed that they were just an online shop and not like an in-person shop, but then I found out that they did recently, I think earlier this year, it was pretty recent that they did open, they were an online only shop, and then they opened an in-person um, shop um, in Poulsbo, Washington, which is kind of far from me. So I live in Seattle and that would require um, me to take a ferry to Bainbridge Island and then to drive from Bainbridge Island to Poulsbo. And I've never, never taken the ferry, never gone to Bainbridge Island. And so thinking about how to navigate that trip and I also don't like driving, and especially driving in places I don't know makes me very anxious. So just thinking about if I ever wanted to go, having to make that trip was like, I don't know when I would feel like I would want to go and make the trek out. Um, but the shop looked so great, and I did eventually want to go. And then they announced recently that they were moving from Posbo to Bainbridge Island, which meant that I would still have to take a ferry over the water to go and visit, but even better was that they were in walking distance from the ferry terminal on Bainbridge Island, so I wouldn't even have to take my car if I didn't want to. Like, if I was just like, just wanna go to the yarn shop, just go to La Mercerie, I could just take the ferry, not take my car there, and walk, which sounded amazing to me. And this weekend actually is, is slash was their opening weekend so their first day open on Bainbridge Island was on Thursday and um, this weekend is a holiday weekend for people in the US so we have or I have Monday off from work this coming Monday so it's a three-day weekend and I decided that I would take Friday off of work to make it a four-day weekend and then use Friday as the day for me to go and check out um, La Mercerie on Bainbridge Island. So yesterday was the day that I went. Um, I went with my boyfriend. It was both of our first times going on the ferry and going to Bainbridge Island, so it was pretty exciting, but I was pretty happy to have someone there with me to experience it all. And um, yeah, so we, again, don't like driving, so we took the light rail to downtown, um, then we walked to the ferry terminal by the water and um, it, was, it was my first time on a ferry ever and it was so funny because when we walked on, my immediate thoughts on how it looked inside 
I was like, oh my gosh, this is from the Spider-Man movie? I think it's... Uh, it's the one with Tom Holland in it and they're, they're on a ferry and it like gets broken in two. Um, anyway, I was like, my immediate thoughts were like, it looks like the fairy from the movie. I guess that's just all, how all um, standard fairies look like, but it was just kind of funny. So we got to walk around. It was unfortunately, um, like the weather was fine, but it was pretty foggy. So once we like left the port, um, we like couldn't see anything until we got to Bainbridge Island, which was kind of sad. Um, but the ride back was better. We could actually see stuff, so that was really cool. Um, but yeah, the ferry ride was fine. Got to Bainbridge Island, did some walking around. There's like a cute little, I don't know if that's called like downtown Bainbridge Island, but like within walking distance of the um, ferry terminal, there's a lot of shops and a lot of food places and we ate lunch and then we went down to La Mercerie which is in just like the cutest building. Um, if you go on their Instagram they posted some pictures and a little like video um, of the inside and it's literally so cute. Um, I wish that I, I lived there so I could go there more often um, but it's so cute and the vibe was so nice. Um, it was such a nice day and I bought lots of yarn. So I do want to share it with you here because I was kind of worried in last week's video that maybe I talked a bit too much about how much yarn I got, but you guys, some of you guys commented and said you liked it um, and liked some yarn hauls. So here we go again. Um, let's start, I'll start with the yarn because that was what made me the most excited. Have it all here. So I saw that part of their like opening weekends on Bainbridge Island, they were going, they are now going to stock this yarn brand, um, La Bien Amy. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but I've heard about their yarn, haven't been able to buy it yet, and so I was excited that they were offering it in store first before they put it online. So I had to go and see what they had. And when I saw this colorway, I knew I was getting a sweater's quantity worth of it. Here it is. It is very me. Um, yeah, so you can see the tag here if you've never heard of this yarn brand, but um, La Bien Amy. It is hand dyed in Paris, and this is in the base Merino Twist, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And this is the color Jinju. And it is, I'm going to take out multiple or just two skeins so you can see all of its amazingness. So it is like this gray pink, gray pink. That's what I'll, I'll call it. Yeah. Can you see that? It's very, um, like dusty pink, um, you can see it right here, with some gray tones, and I think it's just lovely and definitely my kind of color, and it's so squishy and soft. So I did get a sweater's quantity, I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet, but um, it has to be something special because it is just an amazing colorway. So this was in my basket, first thing in my basket, um, it was that. Then I wanted to get another of um, the La Bien Amy yarn, um, but in like a speckled colorway. And I kept, I kept switching it back and forth and then I was like, maybe I'll try a DK base. And I was like, oh, but fingering kind of like, I feel like has a bit more um, it's more versatile for me, I feel like, like I can, since I, I'm so sad, my camera just decided to stop uh, recording, but, um, yeah, I was talking about getting a speckled colorway, and I was choosing between the different colorways, and then getting DK, or a sock weight, or a fingering weight yarn, decided to just go for the good merino twist, same base as the other one, but of course a different colorway, and this one is in the colorway Nymeria? Um, so, as you can see here, kind of, it is just a white creamy base, 
Um, there's some, I think there's some like really light like purple or lavender um, in there as well. And then the speckles are like green, blue, yellow, pink, purple, um, some orange, some like more teal blue. It looks very flowery. Like when I see this, I think like flowery, confetti um, kind of color. Ooh, is the lighting working better now? This looks great. Yeah, this is how I see it pretty much. Yeah, so I thought this was like a really fun um, color to go with. So again, not sure what to make with it, but I bought two skeins of this so that I can probably make um, for sure enough for some kind of tank top, maybe some kind of tee, um, but yeah. This is so fun. It's so fun, and I love all the speckles. So yeah, so that was my second um, colorway um, that I got, and final. I only got two of the La Bien Amy um, yarn colorways, um, but yeah, it makes me so happy. And then special to the store for this weekend, since it was their opening weekend, I had to try their um, ampersand fibers yarn, which is um, La Mercerie's yarn. Um, it was 15% off, and so I thought, what better opportunity to try it, because I've been wanting to try it. And I saw this colorway and felt like it was very... I mean, I would only buy yarns that felt very me, I feel like, but um, it's like solid color and it's pinky it has like hits hints of pink um but purpley as well um kind of like mauve i guess you could say. is that the right color i feel like i one time googled what a mauve color was and it kind of gave me a whole wide range so i'm not super sure but i feel like i would label this as mauve so it's purpley but also pinky um, and I like that the color isn't like fully solid, but I don't know what, how I would describe it. Cause it's not like speckled or, um, um, uh, what's the word? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a solid color, but it does have some depth to it. And I got the, the base I got is the Caslon fingering. The colorway is... I think it's the colorway Pompadour 02. It's 100% US Corydale, um, 400 yards for 100 grams, three ply. So excited to use a yarn like this. Not sure what I'm going to make with it yet, but I know that it'll, once, the, once I see a pattern um, that's good for it, I, I'll know. And I'll let you guys know as well. So excited for this color as well. So that was all the yarn I bought. That was all I feel like my wallet could handle. Um, but that was all the yarn. I didn't say I didn't buy anything else. Um, so let's talk about it. I, one of the things that I knew I wanted, ooh, that I wanted to get when I was there, I was like, buy the off chance that I don't see a yarn that I wanna buy. I still wanna buy something. Um, so I got, and I already took it out of the um, package, but I got some needles. I only, the smallest needle size I owned before this was US one and a half. And um, there was, I realized that, so when I first made socks, knitted socks, I got nine inch circulars in US one. And for some reason, so I can't, I can't work with nine inch circulars. I tried it again recently and I just, I can't do it. I'm so slow. Um, hurts my hands. It just just doesn't work. But then I realized when I knew that I couldn't work with the nine inch circulars, I got um, just regular circulars to do magic loop to make socks. And I got it's US one and a half. I thought I got US one because that's what my nine inch circulars were, but they were one and a half, not one. So I wanted to get US one needles, and so I got these. And again, don't know how to say this, um, chi Chiagu um, needles, um, has the red cable here, uh, metal, 
in US 1. And I think I got, um, what length? 40 inch. So that I can use it probably for garments that require small needles. And also good for small, um, good for socks, I think too. So excited to try these out. I think they're going to be great. I've heard really good things about this brand. This is my first needles from this brand. So excited to see how I get along with these. So this was, um, yeah, just another thing that I got from the store. Um, I also got a book or a magazine, whichever you would call it. Got this pom-pom magazine. It's from their, was it spring of this year? Their dreamscape um, issue. And I actually pre-ordered and um, it's arriving soon. Actually, it might be in my mailbox right now. Um, and if it is, I'll just show it next week. But um, I did pre-order their summer, no, fall? I forget. The one that just came out. Um, and it was expensive for the shipping. I think I paid like $30 total for it. And I wanted to, I wanted to get patterns from here. And so I was debating buying this online as well um, and getting it shipped. But then when I saw this, um, in the La Mercerie shop, it was so much cheaper <laughs> to buy it in the store than it is to just ship it to yourself, which I guess makes sense. But yeah, so glad I was able to get this in store for cheaper. Um, so I think if there's future issues that I want, I'll just go to a store and buy it instead of pre-ordering and shipping it to myself. But yeah, I am excited for this because when it came out and everyone was talking about it, the patterns were really cute, but I just didn't think I was going to make any of them anytime soon, so I didn't think it'd be worth like buying one of these. But the issue that just came out got me so excited, and so I figured I should just uh, just get some. Um, I'm going through here so you can see which patterns that I'm thinking about making. So I'm thinking about making this pattern, this top. It looks so flowy, and I like the lace pattern. It kind of looks like butterflies to me. Um, it's really pretty, super cute, um, then this one, oh yes, this one, um, I'll show this picture. I am planning on making this, I actually bought yarn for it as a pre-order from someone recently, so when that yarn comes in, I'm pretty sure I'll be casting this on pretty soon. I think this is really cute, um, yeah. Is there anything else? I think, I mean, I think a lot of the patterns in here are ones that I would make and wear eventually. So anyway, I'm excited because this is the first time I got a pom-pom magazine with patterns in it. So, and it's so pretty. Um, and it's a nice size. I didn't realize that it was like this small. Um, and it's really cute. So yeah, so this is Another thing I got from the store, and then I was alluding to this earlier, I bought buttons for my Go Gently cardigan that I finished knitting because I was finished knitting with it and realized that I didn't have buttons to go along with it. So I will show you the buttons and how it looks with this. And so I got these buttons, actually I should probably take them out. but. Got six of these guys, and I think they're they're not plastic and they're not wooden. Um, don't know what material they made, they're made out of, but they make this like, are they ceramic? Are they glass? They make this sound. <laughs> if that helps anyone. Um, but yeah, they're like this bone color, and they have like this brown. Oh, I hope the camera focuses this brown, um, oh, there we go, around, um, just circle around at the edge. I think they're really cute, and they look, they're like cute, but, um, classy and simple. And I think they're gonna go well with this cardigan, um, just because it has that overall, like, creamy vibe. If that makes sense, like a soft, 
soft color. Um, so yeah, so if you can imagine it going here, I think that'll look really nice with it. Yay! I think that'll look nice. And thankfully, I didn't measure the buttonholes before I went, but they do fit through the buttonholes. So that's always a plus. I've had issues in the past where the buttons did not fit the buttonholes I made. Um, so yeah, um, got those buttons. And that was everything, I think that was everything that I got from La Mercerie. Um, it was such a fun time. I'm so excited to go back at some point. Um, try not, I would try not to go back too much. Maybe it's good that there, you know, I would have to take a ferry there, a little bit more effort so that I won't have to spend so much money <laughs> um, on yarn things, but I'm really happy that they're in a much more um, accessible, travel-wise for me, place uh, to go. So really excited about that. And there's a bunch more like food places I want to check out on Bainbridge Island as well. So I'll probably just make it into a whole day trip um, next time I go. Um, but yeah, that was so much fun. Um, and I think I had so much fun and it was so exciting. Um, and just the whole day, I was so tired when I got back. I fell asleep at like 8.30, <laughs> um, which was really early for me. Um, but yeah, I feel nice and refreshed. I didn't even get any knitting in yesterday. That's how tired I was. But I am catching up on my knitting today and tomorrow and Monday. So we should be good. Um, but yeah, and then before I forget, I actually did receive something in the mail. Um, well, I pre-ordered it. It's actually my first knitting book. I got it earlier this week and it is the Salt and Timber book by Lindsay Fowler and it is it is my very first knitting book that has knitting patterns that I got um, and so I was really excited to get that in. I did pre-order it um, from her website and so that's how I was able to get it um, and it is such a pretty book. First of all, it's hardcover, and it's just, it, it's beautiful, aesthetically pleasing. And I knew that I had to get this book because there was actually one pattern that I saw. Um, it was a shawl, believe it or not. And let me look it up so you can see it. It was what I was like, when is that pattern coming out? Because I need to make that shawl. Then I realized it was part of this book, and then I was like, mm, hopefully there's other patterns in the book that I want to make as well, so that buying the whole book will feel like it's worth it. And, ooh, I mean, I haven't made anything yet, haven't cast it on anything yet, but it is, there's so many patterns in this book that I want to make. Okay, this is, I found the picture of it. This is the Cape Lookout Shawl. If you can see how that looks. Also, there's better pictures, of course, on her website and on Instagram and stuff. But I love that there's, like, lace here at the bottom. And there's, like, eyelet details. And I believe that it is supposed to be, like, her Bennett sister shawl. I think that's the name of it. Where you can use two... It's made so that you can use two um, skeins of a yarn and then use one skein of a like a mohair. I'll probably use a, a Surrey um, so that one half of, it's kind of hard to see it in the lighting here, but one half of the shawl is made with the Surrey and the other half is just without it, or I'm sorry, mohair. Um, so you can see how those colors change and it's a great way to use up um, like if you have a really special skein or two of mohair or Surrey. Um, so I'm excited to make that because that is the pattern that drew me um, to this book in the first place. Um, there's a lot of sock designs in this book. Ooh, and I actually did buy yarn to make this already. Don't have it, of course, yet, but this is the Salt and Timber Shawl, um, which just looks so good. Um, so. Yeah, so that's this book. Really happy and excited about it. Um, I I never really got, like this whole time that I've been knitting some of the past like two years, um, 
I've just been doing like knitting from patterns that I could buy online um, and I would I won't I'm not the type to print out patterns either I just read it on either my iPad or my computer um, and just go through the patterns there so I was like I don't really get the whole thing about a book because why would you buy a book if you don't want to make all the patterns you can just buy the patterns separately maybe but this is truly like the first book that I've seen that it's just so pretty um, and the patterns look great too so can't wait to make something from this because I think it's going to be great and yeah same kind of goes with like these pom-pom magazines I've only heard about them recently as well but I think the patterns look great as well super excited and it's cool that there's like designers in here that I've seen and have bought patterns from like separately um, like just individually so I think that's really cool too um, yeah there's a whole whole side of knitting that I'm still learning about um, so yeah if you have book or magazine recommendations feel free to let me know in the comments down below because I'm still learning and trying to figure out kind of like um, the things that people know about or is like is popular or famous um, to know about um, in knitting or crafting um, in that community so yeah just let me know and, and let me know anything that you want to share in the comments down below super excited to always hear about what you are working on as well um, yeah so that I think will be the end of this episode um, episode 5 which is crazy because I think that means um, if I've been doing them once a week then it's already a little over one month of when I started making this podcast and it's been a lot of fun um, it's fun talking to some of you in the comments um, and things that you've shared as well um, really like hearing about it and um, yeah I'm just again love sharing my projects and hearing what you guys have to say or think about it um, and yeah um, also love sharing the yarn hauls because I could just talk about my love of the yarn and the craft and the designers it just makes me so happy so again just really happy to be making these videos and that some of you like it as well so thank you again so much for watching I hope you're having a great day and if you also have a holiday weekend this weekend I hope you are doing something fun um, and if not Hope you're getting a lot of knitting done if that's something that you want to do and makes you happy. Um, and yeah, so I will end it here for today. Um, feel free to subscribe if you're not already. And if it's something that you want to do, feel free. And if you don't, that's okay. There's no pressure. Um, and if you want to see more of my posts um, of what I'm working on and things that I'm finishing up, and all of that maybe like finished object pictures as well you can find me on instagram at airy knits which is the same name as this podcast so feel free to follow me there if you would like and with that thank you again and i will see you next week bye